in the late 1940s, Windsor, Ontario was a hub of automotive production, including Chrysler, who produced many vehicles, including the B-Series Dodge pickup. But the one I'm more interested in is truck 9008040, which is the serial number to my grandfather's 1948 Dodge half-ton pickup. As you know, I was in the family hardware business in, in Charleston uh, back in the 50s. And uh, we acquired, in 1951, we acquired a 1949 Dodge Half Ton, which we used for the next nine years, uh, hauling every possible item uh, in connection with the hardware business. And I even made a snow plow and uh, plowed the yard out in the winter time with it. I guess it would be in the 70s, I got the bug to restore an old vehicle. And the one that I wanted to restore was naturally just the same as the original truck. And so a 49? At, well, it turned out this is a 48, but the 48 and the 49 models were exactly the same. Uh, with the exception of... Uh, the rear fender and halfway through the production year of 48 they lengthened the fender. The early models had the short fender. Uh, so I was a traveling sales rep at the time and uh, traveled all over southern Ontario and uh, whenever I'd go by a wrecking yard I'd stop in to see if they had any old Dodge half tons and I, anything I did find was badly rusted out and uh, pretty well beyond uh, restoration. So, so one day I'm, I'm traveling between Niagara on the Lake and Niagara Falls along the Niagara Parkway and out of the corner of my eye I spied uh, this truck sitting beside a, a residence. And uh, so anyway I made a deal to, uh, to purchase it. When I looked at it I First of all, I looked it all over and it was exactly identical to the one we used to have. So uh, I made a deal to purchase it and uh, the following Saturday, uh, with the help of the company car which had a, which was a 76 Chev with a V8 motor in it, uh, I it had a tow bar that I could tow the truck with, and I towed it home. When I first saw the truck, I was very, very upset. I thought, holy heavens, how is he going to get that home? But he managed to pull it, but I was hoping nobody was looking out the windows <laughs> until he got it home. But he, he managed it home, and in time he worked with it, and I think it looks pretty good now myself. How was it having a whole house full of parts? Oh, well, they were mostly downstairs, thank goodness, so I didn't have to bother too much unless I went down to wash or something. I was uh, just jumping over things or not jumping, but walking over things. But I'm kind of an easygoing person, so I, I got along with it okay. And I spent the next four and a half years restoring it. That first winter, uh, I spent most of my time uh, tearing it apart. What were your first initial thoughts of the uh, truck? Well, I was uh, quite a young lad myself at the time. And I remember uh, the old truck was pretty much a piece of crap sitting there in the garage. Slowly but surely, there started to be parts all over the house, uh, sanded and painted. I remember the day uh, his, the frame came home on this trailer. It was painted, all sandblasted and painted red. I thought, 
Then I thought, well, maybe this will finally get done. That was a big job because everything was rusted. And, uh, but uh, the old truck was, there wasn't one item on it that didn't need uh, attention. Everything. Uh, for instance, uh, the grill itself, this metal piece was pushed back in. These grill bars were all flattened right out. The old hood ornament was badly pitted. So I have a, a binder, an inch thick of correspondence I have. That was in the days before the internet, uh, looking for parts. Quite a few of the parts came from sources down in the States. The original truck didn't have the bumperettes and I, I was able to acquire them at different flea markets. That set of three now is on the internet and they want $650 for those three bumperettes. So, uh, I guess everything else is pretty well um, described in, in the book that I uh, did on it. Any specifics, like who was some of the people that helped you? Oh yeah, well there was, there was three or four elderly gentlemen. One was Frank Tuesley, um, who had a wrecking yard down near Dunville. And I got a lot of my, he happened to have several old, uh, what they called pilot house cab uh, trucks in his wrecking yard. And I was able to get such items as, I got the, uh, the cab liner from him and several other parts. There was a lot of parts missing off the truck as well when I started to put it back together. Frank Tuesley, another, Fellow was Bill Webb in uh, Hagersville. He used to be a, a Dodge dealer and he still had some Dodge parts. And I bought a few parts from him. Jerry Spinelli was the guy that did the paint on it, an excellent painter, and shortly after that he moved to California. Probably the biggest help that I had in, in restoring the truck or if I ever had a, a problem or a question, I just went to Paul Demetrison. What were some of the stuff you worked on the on there with? Uh, mostly, mostly the, the engine. I think mostly the engine, right, Ralph? Okay. Yeah, we did uh, we did the valves once. We did head gaskets a couple times, and maybe odds and ends. Paul is very knowledgeable on not only old vehicles but uh, the new modern ones as well. But uh, the problem with Paul was uh, he would do work for me on the truck, but he never wanted to charge me the going rate. He would just charge me a nominal figure and uh, because it was for my old truck. When you're going north, you and Elaine stop in and have a nice breakfast. <laughs> and as recently as uh, this week, I had it out to, to uh, adjust the uh, rear spring bushing. Over the years I've had uh, problems with it. I had a burnt valve at one time and then I uh, also had a, um, a bad, a blown head gasket and that, in both cases Paul Demetrison fixed it up for me and, uh, and of course it, it runs like a charm after he tunes it up. To that Bluebrook care shop to get the oil changed. A bunch of young lads doing oil changes and I lifted the hood and he said, now what do we do? <laughs> they didn't have a clue. There were, looked at the oil filter and said, what's that? So what do you usually use the uh, truck for? I had it, I had it stored at uh, Clay's Cottage for seven years and then I had it 
uh, stored um, in Charlton, where I built a new garage for it. I had it stored there for 15 years, and uh, mostly uh, I've had it in parades and uh, car shows. I've, uh, the car show we went to on uh, Sunday was the eighth car show I've been to with it this year. Clayt made a trip to Clearwater Lake to pick up some stuff. Oh wow, all the way to Clearwater? Eh? All the way in Clearwater? Yeah, and to pick up some barrels at uh, for Clayt's dock. And that was just after he, uh, just after he bought uh, Wasiosa. <laughs> Got an award for your, the interior? Oh yeah, I was at one car show and uh, it's the only time I ever stayed long enough to be in a, a contest, but uh, the thing that surprised me, I got an award for uh, best interior. And I think the reason for that was that uh, I've kept it uh, strictly stock. It's, uh, it's just as it was uh, as they uh, come out of the factory. The heat is right where it's supposed to be, and the amp meter, when the, when the battery is fully charged, the amp meter settles back to zero, and the fuel gauge works. Why didn't that? Yeah, and why well, pick a Dodge instead we, of Ford? We traded, a, at Coles Harbor, we traded the old truck in on the 59 Merc, and the 59 Merc was, in a lot of ways, uh, probably a... a better truck but uh, when I when I got the bug to restore something uh, it was the old dodge that I thought of.